Hello and welcome to your weekly tarot reading uh, brought to you by Nicholas and this is for the week of Monday, September 1st through Sunday, September 7 of 2014. And I will be using the Osho Tarot deck like I always do and I love and I'm just most familiar with and I'm most close to. Uh, I was trying to do some more experimentation with the Wild Unknown deck I had, with the Thoth deck I had, and I was going to pull a three-card spread, and I was just realizing it was turning into like an hour-long video. And who needs, who has like an hour long to sit down to, to read a very complex spread, so we're just doing a do-over. I like to experiment, and sometimes they fail, or sometimes you need to regroup and think a little bit more before you bring it to the public eye. So, for Monday, the September 1st, I... I would the, the Osho card of the day is the Five of Clouds, and this is comparison. So you can see it's like an oak tree versus a bamboo tree in that. <laughs> First, I'd like to just <laughs> excuse me. First, I'd like to just pull the cards, and then do my jump. My reading. Oh my God! How many times do we pull up the Five of Rainbows? You know, the Five is the Pentacle card in other decks. In the Osho deck, it's the um, um, it's the Earth card, so it's it's five of resources, and it's an outsider. For Wednesday, on September third, we have the Nine of Clouds. The Nine of Clouds is popping up a lot for me lately, and a lot of my readings I'm doing. In fact, I found a Nine of Spades, and the, uh, this the swords are the cloud. You know, that's what the air represents. And so anytime you get the Nine of Spades, it's not usually an auspicious card. It's usually something sad. Um, it's usually something, you know, in your mind. And if, like in the old um, Rider Waite deck, the Nine card is, you know, there's somebody sitting in bed, and then you see the Nine Swords in the background, and it's kind of a lot like that Osho card. And he's just crying, or she's crying. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for Thursday, September 4. We have the Queen of Rainbow. That's a very beautiful card, a very nice card. That should be a very good Thursday. It kind of aligns with that Jupiter energy. The planet of Thursday is Jupiter. Friday is the dream. And you make this dream what you want. I mean, in the Osho deck, when they describe this card in the book, it's, it's kind of more of like a negative, you know, it's... Like you're dreaming about something that's unrealistic or you, you don't really need it instead of just being happy where you are and, and trying to really figure out and aligning where you are now. So I'll discuss this a little bit more in depth. So Saturday the 6th, the Osho card is the Master. Wow. That is great. That's, you know, the Master card is kind of like in the Thoth deck. There's like that beetle there's like a beetle card in there and that's something about having your spiritual guides behind you that's kind of what the Osho Master card is all about and then Sunday the 7th of September you're going to be getting this 3 of creativity it's a major arcana card so that is very great okay so the, the general themes that I'm seeing in the week so unlike last week there's not a lot of major arcana cards and then you get into the weekend on Saturday and Sunday of of this, the 5th and 6th, and I mean the 6th and 7th, and you're getting some major arcana cards. You get the Master card, which is like a guardian angel, someone looking over you, but really it's about you of mastering all the remnants of the cards, all the symbol, you know, symbols of the card. Now you're ready and you're out there and you're, you're just, you're allowed to be you in the most complete you that you can possibly be for the universe. And it's a very refreshing and you're just in the zone and that's what it represents. It's very auspicious. And then it looks like on Sunday we take that into the creative field. You know, these are cards that I look at every day too. I mean, these are my cards of the week as well. So my my Monday card is going to be the Five of Clouds comparison. Um, you know, that's just a reminder to not play those head games and compare yourself. It's as simple as that. It's not nothing we need to overthink. But what I always say about the Cloud card, sometimes if you are getting in too big of a funk, Sleeping it off is good. That's what I do for migraine headaches. But the other thing to do is just taking action. Stop thinking about how they're better than you or you're better than you, not them. And just take some actions towards the goals that you really need to be doing. There's some major work that's going to be coming up for the weekend. So I, it seems like Monday we're always starting off with these air cards that are kind of pejorative. You know, they're kind of like 
reminding you to get out of your head. So it's a good good thing to get out of your head come Monday. When Tuesday comes, just remember that you think you're an outsider. If there's something you feel excluded from, the lock on this gate is unlocked, and the child is locking themselves behind and, and excluding themselves from all the riches of that beautiful rainbow by themselves. So just remember that you're not as excluded as you think, and you do have the resources that you need if you're scared of something. And this is, the five is about, the five in, is in astrology is love and happiness and creativity and what brings you joy and small children. It's just, it's just that fun loving house. And so when you get a five card, it, this kind of looks negative because the kids lock behind the gate, but it's really not. So just remember that about your own life. I'm getting, it's like you start seeing cards all the time and you just stop. It's like, oh yeah, you're here again. So Wednesday, it's, it's the sorrow card. And this is like, the to me, it's like a bad night. You're worrying about something that's just never going to formulate. To me, it's the monster at the end of this book. It's this old, you know, that old Sesame Street book where Grover doesn't want you to turn to the end of this book because it's the title of the book is there's a monster at the end of this book. But once he gets there, he realizes there's nothing to be scared of after all. That's what really is going on here. But there's just two ways you need to look at it. You need to look at it as like you can sleep it off. Sometimes eating food to ground yourself is a big thing when you're feeling this emotional sorrow. But then these other things when you're feeling this sorrow is just remember when you sleep it off, the next day is brand new. Um, but so yeah, you can sleep it off or, or eat it off or in a healthy way. I'm not saying unhealthy. But sometimes you got to get food in your stomach. You're neglecting your body and you're forgetting something and that will help your mood. But you either do those physical things or those mental things to prep yourself and get yourself out of it. Or you really pay attention to that pain and you really, really dig deep into what it means and represents and you really, really meditate on it. And that's how Buddha's um, cousin and Gabe, you know, reached enlightenment. It's because he sat with his pain that night after Buddha died and cried himself so much and he sat with that pain and explored it so deep, the next day he realized he, he gained some light in it. So Thursday, the 4th, is that auspicious, just give up your resources. It's funny, I had a an Irish tea leaf reading with a woman on the 3rd Street Promenade in Santa Monica, and it was great. One of the things she was reminding me of, and that's what this card reminds me to do, is just, you're abundant, life is abundant, um, she, one of the practices she says is like, abundance is luxury. Your life is luxurious. You're going to have luxury. The thing that you need to be thinking about is visualizing that luxury and believing that you have it now. And not only that, but you, you just got to be thankful for everything you see. It's like today I saw this awesome Pontiac Butte and it was just this amazing car. And she was just saying luxury is not things that you need. It's things that you have that you don't need. It's those extra things. And so, yeah, we don't want to you know, overstep, or we don't want to get gluttonous, I guess, but at the same time, there is a time in life where you can just li allow yourself to be so luxurious that then one day you're just giving your luxury away, and that's what the Queen of Rainbows is doing and is reminding us to do, is to just, we ha we just be thankful for everything that we have, and look at the things that we have and we don't need, and don't think bad things about them, think positive things about them, and, and think about how you can be giving this luxury to other people, very important. The six of water, you know, water cards are all about relationships. And when you get to six, that's kind of like, I always think of it as the house card, but I mean, your your day-to-day, -day, your the house of sorrows in astrology, but, you know, the, the tarot decks don't seem to be predicated on the house system. So the one thing I can say about this card is, is, is this dream a, a, a true need? Is there not like a man maybe waiting outside for her in real life, like why is she being stuck in this dream when she should really be working on herself, thinking about her own personal happiness and getting over this like fairy tale at the end of the day. You know, there's not going to be somebody who's going to come and save you and make you happy. You're going to be a happy person and you're going to resonate so happy that when you're in a relationship, if you're in a relationship and you're not happy with yourself, you're going to be in a really bad relationship. So this is just one of those emotional cards to, to remind you to work on yourself come Friday. Really pay attention to yourself and your own moods. And if you're happy, you'll be manifesting happy people in situations around you. The MasterCard come Saturday. That's just good luck, good deeds. You're handling Monday through Friday just fine, and you're going to get to something deeper and more profound come Saturday.
know, there's definitely like that guardian angel aspect to that card looking after you, but you also of earning it in a way of you just aligning with those energies all week that you've become the master. And then Sunday, just have some fun. Be creative. Um, you know, it's very early on in, this, in the um, Major Arcana, so it's still kind of like going from the Fool to the Magician to the High Priestess. Now here we are at 3 at Creativity. So just have fun and expand and explore and, you know, do those fun Sunday things. I mean, hopefully, I call Sunday your shine day. I hope you can shine. You know, in general, the, the big there's not a lot of Major Arcana cards. There's just one Court card. So let's just kind of go over what I think that means. And there's two five cards, which I think are interesting. So in a general theme of the week, the, the major arcana cards, that you, whenever you pull them out of deck, these represent situations and specific things that you're going through that you need, that you will experience. They're like situational things. Um, you know, something spiritual, something with your job, something with the abundance, something with family, something with you know, morality, I don't know, there's some type of experience that you have to get and grow, grow with, so maybe it's through meditation, maybe through um, just really bonding with others, you're the master of your own self, and I love astrology, look to your sun on Saturday and see what your sun's all about, well actually if it's Saturday, look to your Saturn in your chart and what it's trying to represent to you, and see what you need to align with that, because that's what this master's all about, is you being your true self, my Saturn is in Libra, and it's a, that's the exalted house for Saturn. So align with align with that. That means you know be structured in how I communicate. Be very just and balanced, and 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 don't overdo it. Another experience you're gonna have to experience creativity on Sunday. So the weekends are all about experiences this weekend. That's great. The the week is just kind of more frivolous and fluff. All these emotions are gonna pass. But I just want to bring up you know court card sometimes represents a person come into your life and the queen of pentacles is usually a dark woman you know de probably definitely very beautiful and sensual looking um and so you might see this mother kind of woman of abundance and freedom and joy who's really willing to share her resources on 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 a thursday but to get out of the polar tricks of it just how can you align with this energy and how can you align with this woman if you see her? It's very important to think about that and, and can you embody it in yourself? You know, you might see her and she might give you that good example that you can really, really learn from. So I'd really recommend that. But other than that, we have two five cards. And even though they kind of like are negative in a way, Monday and Tuesday, Monday being the, the comparison in our mind and then Tuesday being more of like the physical plane, like feeling left out in a physical way from the rest um, you know, he's physically locked out from that rainbow, that poor child. So a lot of this, though, is just it's all in your mind. Five is about having fun and being creative. So if you can do something communicative that's fun and creative and get yourself away from comparison, do that. Maybe you can joke about your comparison instead of being serious about it. The fifth, just remember that you're not as left out as you think you are. That's all I have to do to remind you. So, And you're, experience your own pain on Wednesday. And definitely work on self come Friday. Don't let anything get you down. Don't don't let the dream get you down like you're not there yet because come s Saturday, that's when the blessings are going to come. And you're going to have a situation of creativity on Sunday. So I hope that was helpful. My name is Nicholas. If you have any qu comments, questions, um, please leave them for me. And thank you so much. I hope you have a great week, and I hope um, you have a great Labor Day. Thanks.